City of Grand Rapids recently passed an ordinance protecting individuals from being discriminated against in pretty much every aspect of their everyday lives. And Tom Sine is joining us now to explain exactly what this new ordinance in Grand Rapids means. Well, Derek, it was passed by City Council unanimously okay. just recently back on August 27th. It hasn't gone into effect yet. It will go into effect in December 1 of this year. But as you said, it's going to affect many aspects of life in the city because it touches different aspects of life right. and it because it has a very broad definition of the types of people who are in what are called protected classes. Okay. Okay, so what are those people? I'll read you the list. Color, race, religion, creed, sex, gender identity, sexual orientation, national origin, genotype, age, marital status, medical condition, disability, height, weight, or source of income. That's where it really gets broader right there. Things you wouldn't even necessarily think about, you know, height, things like that. Things that really matter to some people. That's right. And those are all protected classes, which means that any type of discrimination along the lines of those protected classes mm -hmm. is no longer legal in the city of Grand Rapids. Right. And it's no longer legal in specific areas that I think are going to affect a lot of people. The two most common, housing and employment. Sure, two of the most important things you have to have. Any type of discrimination against anyone in those protected classes is now prohibited, and, and it will be prohibited citywide as of December 1st. Now, this gets a little complicated when you start to think about how it's implemented. Let's take housing, for example. Does that mean that a landlord has to rent to anyone? that they can't refuse anyone. Yeah, I own this property, I have to, if someone applies, I have to run it to them hypothetically, for example. The answer to that is? The answer to that is no, no. no. You cannot discriminate against that person, mm -hmm. but there are certain exceptions to the landlord's decision that are permitted under this ordinance. Okay. For example, safety is one of them. All right, okay? that makes sense. A conviction record, you, you can account for a conviction record. However, a landlord cannot have an outright ban on renting to people with conviction records. Sure. Okay, competence or uh, concerns of other neighbors, however, those alone are not enough. So all of these various aspects will affect the landlord's decision making and some of them are gonna be permissible and some of them are not. And a similar dynamic occurs in, in employment. So what happens if this ordinance is violated? Okay. Well, there's two different remedies. The first is that the city attorney can pursue a civil infraction case against the person alleged to have violated, and I think the fine can, cannot exceed $500. Okay. But the victim is also entitled to pursue a civil claim mm. against the person the victim believes violated the ordinance. And that civil claim can include a variety of forms of damage, including a request that the alleged violator pay the victim's attorney fees. Mm. So I think that we're going to probably see a lot of, of issues come up over the next few years as we try to figure out how to live with this new ordinance and make sure that everybody's in compliance. And, yeah. And it'll be very If the city felt the need to pass an ordinance, certainly it was a problem somewhere. Deep down um, obviously, and I think everybody yeah. understands that, that we, we understand exactly yeah. why we have this. For sure. And we're going to learn yeah. how we're going to live with it. What do we track you down, Tom? 616-301-3333 in West Michigan. Anywhere online at www.sinusdramus.com or shoot us an email at info at sinusdramus.com. Right, thanks, Tom. Thanks, Derek.